So we got to cut out both sides. Uh, I put it on a belt sander where I could on the flat parts. And then for every place else, I used a Dremel with a small barrel. I got it on a foot pedal so I can start and stop it. And I see that I need to touch this up. So like I'm carving. And I just slowly pull that high spot down until it looks straight. That looks pretty good to me. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, it could be if you wanted to spend tons and tons of time on it. Some of you might. But I mean, for me, this is pretty good. So it's cut out, the edges are sanded. Okay, I got it all cut out. As you can tell, it is ugly. However, handy dandy Dremel, gonna take care of all that. Okay, so we got it cut out. I uh, got everything sanded. All my corners are nice. And stack it up, and this is kind of what we're gonna get when it's all finished doesn't look too bad I think it's it's passable so now I'm gonna go ahead and label it this is my bottom top and it's kind of important just because of the way the holes align up and then I'm gonna go ahead and trace everything out so that I know where the components kind of sit in relation to the cutouts on top this will help me when I go ahead and start laying out speed controls and receiver and and things of that nature. You don't have to do this, but I, I like doing it just so I can tell what's going on. Everything's cut out, sanded. All the holes are drilled. So what I'm going to use is some Delrin rod. It's quarter inch outside diameter by eighth inch inside diameter. And I'm actually going to cut this down into spacers and this is what's going to offset each frame plate from each other. I'm just going to cut them down to the the depth or the width of whatever the highest part of my arm is. And then I'll drill each one out with three millimeters so that the screws can slide through. This is, is the arm material. It's just half inch poplar dial rod. You can get it at like Lowe's or Home Depot. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half just to get it to a workable size. It's kind of a pain in the butt to use it at a three foot length. And this was purchased at McCarr Master. Um, I'm going to just chuck it into the drill. And then I'm going to actually use pipe cutters and spin, spin the rod in the pipe cutter and that actually let me cut it pretty quick. So as it spins, I tighten up the barrel down and it, it cuts through really easily. So I'm going to make my standoffs with this piece. I'm actually going to take the calipers that I have and I have them set to the depth of my arm. And these are just junk calipers. They're like $15 calipers from Lowe's. But I'm able to put the edge of the caliper on the edge of the dowel rod or on the edge of the tubing and then score it to the size that I need to cut and it creates a groove that the uh, pipe cutter blade will actually sit in. So I get an accurate cut every time. And that just creates a groove in it and now I open these up and I set the blade into the groove, the cutter's blade tighten it down a bit and then give it a spin 
I'm going to need, I don't know, 15, 16 of these for the entire frame. So I'm not going to bore you too much. I'll go ahead and speed the action up. This is like 16 time for your pleasure. I didn't want you to have to see every piece cut because it takes a little bit of time when you're getting 15, 16 of them. But it's, I find it's the easiest and the most reliable way. I'm going to go ahead and chuck up a drill bit after this one. A uh, 3 millimeter drill bit is what I use for everything because I use 3 millimeter hardware. And I'm just going to drill them out to the 3 millimeter, and it stays tight enough to where it actually catches them a little bit, but they can press through. I'm just going to take my cheap Chinese pliers to hold the pieces that I've cut, and just drill them out real quick. And again, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'll show you one, two, and then go ahead and move on. You know, you can probably buy these pre-made but who wants to buy stuff pre-made I like to make as much as I possibly can so those are done oh I got one more sorry that's not totally done one more then what I'm gonna do is start installing them onto the frame I'm gonna press my screws through it and then slide the spacers on it you can see I have four screws are ready. We're not going to put the screws in where the arms go. It's that tight cluster. But we want to go everywhere else. We just slide them through. The, the holes are tight enough to where there's some pressure still. So it takes a little bit to push them through, but go ahead and just do it. And then the spacer slide. And if, if you can't get them all the way on, like a few turns, of a screwdriver will get them to sink down but for the most part they slide on and just have a little bit of tension to where they don't fall right back off and again I'm not going to bore you with me doing the entire frame but you, you see a couple done and this is how they'll all be done and you're going to put them in all the holes except for where the actual arms get clamped down And I'll have that marked on the, the plans so you know where the actual spacers go and where they don't. These are a little tighter than what I wanted, but just a couple turns on the screwdriver and they sink right down. So let me go and show you what it's going to look like. We're just going to do a test fit. Everything lines up really well, and you, you just got to massage it a little bit to get it on. Uh, because we are dealing with very loose tolerances, I just push the screws around to line them into the hole and then press down. Work my way from the back to the front. Don't have to do this right now, but I like to put stuff together and take it back apart a hundred thousand times just for my own amusement. This is a good time to, to get a feel of what the frame is actually going to look like. I think it's going to look pretty cool for homebrew design. That's it. The screws that we haven't put in yet these actually go through the top and the bottom and it creates like a pinch block for the arms that hold the motors and it just you basically just crank them down and it tightens it around the arms and holds them in very tightly the nice part about this is you can loosen it up and pull the arms right out for either storage or you know if you want to put it in a case just make your motor wires a little longer when we get to that part. So I'm going to tear it back apart because I didn't really need it together. But I need to pull it apart now and we can actually start placing components or getting ready to place components.
and again all the holes are fairly tight so a little massaging a little rubbing a little elbowing to get it apart but it doesn't take much so these are speed controls that I'm using they're the F30A's from Hobby King or actually I'm sorry these are the F20A's from Hobby King I've got a couple flashed already and I've got a video tutorial on how to do this goes in a little bit more in depth I'm not gonna bore you with that however I do go ahead and demonstrate how we're going to set these speed controls up I want to just go ahead and get an idea of placement you know this video is being filmed the first time I've actually built this frame so I just wanted to get an idea of placement and this is I like this but I think we can clean it up make it a little bit nicer the wire sticking out of the side is killing me so we'll fix that check an ES or the receiver placement it's gonna go there but it's gonna it's gonna move a little bit it's gonna actually flip around the other way and then that's it for this the next video will be the speed controls oh boy.